Everyone dreams of living an uncommon life. And the best asset you have to achieve your dreams is you. Welcome to the Uncommon Wealth Podcast. We're going to introduce you to people who are living uncommonly. We're also going to give you some tools and strategies for building wealth and for pursuing an uncommon path that is uniquely right for you. Hello and welcome everybody to another episode of the Uncommon Wealth Podcast. I'm your host, Philip Ramsey. And I'm Aaron Kramer. Thanks for tuning in. Today, we have a fun topic. I would say an interesting topic. And I think that Aaron and I are going to riff for a while. Now, this could be something you'll be like, okay, check out, move on to the next week, fine. But I really do want to talk about this. And it's this concept, Aaron brought it up. I just want to be the first person to tell you that this is Aaron's like, we got to do a podcast on it. I think this will be good. And it's a concept. To be fair, I got it from my pastor. Oh, okay. Even better. I didn't know that part. It's good. Here's the topic. Trying to leave your kids off where you left off. So have your kids ceiling. No, have your ceiling be your kids floor. I don't know how else to say that. Articulate that in a better way. So that our listeners can have a different couple ways to look at this. Yeah. So like, I mean, like think about like everything you have to overcome and there's only so much time in life to accomplish things. Right. So you had to, overtake things if you're building a business if your if your family has never graduated from college and then you go to college and graduate from college like now you got the debt thing you got whatever it is well you you want that to be an easy thing to tackle the next time for your children so they can go one step further yeah no i think that's good okay another way to think about this is like trying to instill all your wisdom into your children. So they have that downloaded. And so they can just keep going, right? Like, so they can go further down this path of life than you did. Yeah. I don't know how else to say it. That's all you get. So if you don't get it at this point, just hit next. Yeah. We'll see you next next. week. Um, Well, like the one way, like I've been thinking about this a lot lately, because my daughter, I don't think she's any prodigy of any sort when it comes to like athletics. But she she has found the sport she really enjoys. Yeah. And you start reflecting back when you were an athlete, and you look at the guys that have or gals that have had a lot of success in their their time as an athlete. Mm-hmm. And you look at the people around them, and it's usually they have some very successful athletes at, around them that, in their day and age. Mm-hmm. And so Cause all of us can sit back and be like, Oh my gosh, if I could go back and do it again, I would change these things. Right. Yeah, right. Well, that's your mistakes, right? The mistakes yeah. you made, the wisdom that you gathered through that. Well, now you can better, you know, help your child through those things to avoid those mistakes yep. and make sure they can make it one step further. Cause they didn't make that mistake or crucial step that was like very affected the outcome for you. Yeah. So that's good. That's how I think about this. No, I think that's good. And I do think that it, it sums up an interesting thing that a lot of people have. It's called helicopter parenting. <laughs> and like, oh, that's okay. the downside of you trying so hard to get your kid to be something that maybe like you wanted to be or living vicariously through your child that you're oh, just yeah. pushing all this pressure on your child and you're just being a helicopter parent. So I think the the fear of trying to instill or trying to set the pavement down so your kid can run as fast as they can is that you do a helicopter parent. Because I do know that each kid is different, right? You have the you're blessed to have one, I'm blessed to have three, and each each one of them are very different. And so to try to it almost is it's hard because not only are they different, you try to figure out one for the first like you're like, okay, I think I got this. And then the next day it changes. And you're like, son of a yeah. Um, But at the end of the day, like, I think there's truth. Like, I do want my kids to learn from my mistakes is really how I'm going to say it. Yeah. And then also, like, like, I started Uncommon Wealth Partners. Like, we started this business. We started this industry. If they do ever go in this industry, I hope they don't have to suffer like <laughs> you and I have had to do. Right. But now I will say, and there's been podcasts in the past, you can go to them, that I feel like there's been character that I've built in the trials 
that I would like are priceless to me that I wouldn't change ever because they've made me who I am. Now, is that wise to try to take that away from my kids? I'd say no, but how do you give them a path in order for them to go further down the path than you are? Because again, I'm 42 and I hope my kids aren't going to be where I'm at at 42. I hope they're further, right? Yes. Yep. I know that's the whole, I mean, making your ceiling their floor, they get to start off. But like with that, like with all the wisdom, when you're, passing it off like like let's just say if it's a business if you're passing it off so you hit your ceiling you grew your business as big as you can now it's time to retire and and like enjoy what you've created you know step away from it and if your children if you're blessed that your children want to take it over in this Mm -hmm. instance for example that they can take it and run with it like you would have another 25 years to do Oh, that's cool. You know, right. So you pass on all your wisdom, all your trials. They've learned from it. And now they get to run even harder with it. And so that'd be the perfect ideal situation, right? Like, yeah. oh my gosh, I get I passed everything off onto them, my all my knowledge I could of all my trials, all that. And now they're the, they're just gonna keep taking it farther. It's like that gives me goosebumps to think about that. I'm like, oh my gosh, if I could accomplish that, that'd be amazing. Right. No, I, I agree. And also like, how do you let your kids fail in the, in, in the confines of growing them to have character and endurance and steadfastness, all these things, how do you, because I would say if I didn't have those things that happened to me and that I've had to go through, I'd be a spoiled rotten kid. I'd be, yeah. a, I'd be a little man child almost like anyway. So so there is truth to be going through trials, but what you learn and how I think I parent through them are going to be different because they're valuable. They're, they're valuable to me. Yeah. So how do you let your kids go through those things and yet still come out on the other side and still have more of a momentum than you did when, you know, right where we're at yeah. 42. <laughs> having that grace for you and, and having the grace for the people that don't have that, ability because they're still like they're a generation behind you know right right on something because i know we were talking about this not too long ago i saw a quote on you know social media it said that was it fast success Uh results in ego slow success results in character or yeah Yeah, something like that something like that like like because it takes a long like you always go through so many trials and slow success and you appreciate, you learn to appreciate everything along the ways. But if you just like blow up and have great success real fast, if you're not like your typical business owner that takes like 10 years to build something. Yeah. Like you, I see it every time. Like you talk to somebody and they just think they're like the next best thing to slice bread. You're like, uh huh. it's an entitlement. They're entitled. And yeah. it's brutal. It's brutal. It's brutal. It's brutal. They have nothing to give. Like, it's like, we, there's no good conversations. <laughs> it's like, oh, this, this is horrible. But then you talk to an old timer that it they did the 10 year path or whatever. Yeah. It took them some time. Yeah. You're like, oh my gosh, can I grab coffee with you every day? Cause you yeah, have right. so much wisdom to give. But that's what you want for our children, like your kids. You know, like you want them to be like, oh my gosh, I want to learn from you. But so how do you do that? Now it turned into a parenting podcast. Uncommon parenting, everybody. How do you yeah. not be a helicopter parent and not raise entitled children yet want to give them a better foothold than you had at the beginning? Yeah. How do you do that? Because like you want to be engaged, but not too engaged. <laughs> you want them to how fail, you- but you don't really want them to fail. Yeah. And here's a, this little thing that you've like you love more than anything else. Like you're like. Oh, I'm going to let you fall down and get hurt. Oh, right. you know? tell us a story because I think this is fascinating when your daughter was like, no, I want to hurt. Like I want it. I want to practice and I want it to be hard. And you were like glowing. <laughs> you were like, yeah. this is the best. Did he, okay, so this just happened not too long ago. Like I Elena has been swimming. She's a rock star. And I think she, this is, I'm going to edify your parenting because you're not like saying like, listen, as soon as you win, you're going to get a toy. No, you're like, yeah. Hey, get your personal record, like your personal best. Then we will celebrate. Like every time she steps, she, she dives into that pool. I don't know if she's diving at this point. She probably is. She's she is, an Olympic yeah. swimmer at this point, but every time she dives in that pool, she's trying to beat herself. 
that to yep. me is a healthy competition. That's so, okay. My, like, I hang my hat on that. I, I'm not the best parent. You don't want parenting advice from me. But like the one thing I feel like I can, can hang my hat on is like, I came up with the idea. We're in a sport that's timed. I am not celebrating like podiums. Not that she's made the podium, but if she ever makes the podium, I'm not celebrating it. Right. Like, I don't care. Like, I only care about the PRs, your personal records. Did you beat your time before at the meet? Because that means it tells me how hard you worked all week at practice and things like that. Yeah. Right. But for your story, though, yeah, we, so my neighbor has a pool and I was, I bought it like this little thing that wraps around her waist so I can hold a string so she can swim. Oh, nice. And I know infinity nothing about pool. Swim. Yeah. I can't be a helicopter parent with swim because I didn't swim. I don't know what good point was it. like. I love it. So I really enjoy her not like wrestling or anything like that. Yeah. And so there's a key to not being a helicopter parent. Just don't know what they're doing. Like my kids play lacrosse. I can't help you. I can't yeah. be a helicopter parent there. Yep. All we can do is like instill like effort, right? Like, Sounds I great. Like, it looks great. You did great. How you feel? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but the one thing I do know is like, okay, I know how to like get in shape, you know, yeah. that's the thing. So I, uh, and I always ask her cause I mean, she's young. She's going to be in fifth grade. I was like, do you want to work out today? And she like, she always says yes with excitement. I'm like, okay. And I try to make sure like to be very mellow about it. I don't want to be pushy. And if she says no, I'm like, okay, I don't ever want her to feel guilt, but she's never said no yet. So, um, so we go over there to the pool and so what we do is we do 30 minutes. So we go one minute on. So she swims as hard as she can for one minute. And then we t- she stops for a minute, rest, and goes another minute. And so anyways, we're doing this and we get all the way to the last session, like the last go. And she gives up from what it looks like in my perspective because she stops swimming with like five seconds to go. I'm like, well, this is weird. She turns around. This is like so proud for like as dad. I love talking about this, but I like gets me all choked up. I'm like, <laughs> uh, she turns around. She's like about to start crying. And she's like, dad, I can't go any harder. I'm like swallowing too much water. And I'm like, it's too hard. I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Be done. But in my mind, I'm like a 10 year old just pushed herself to almost puking in the pool. And I'm like, super proud moment as a dad. I'm like, yeah. you go girl, take right. the rest of the time off. You're done. You know? <laughs> right. So, right. and I think that would answer our second question is like, how do you not raise entitled children and how do you pave the path for them to be able to go further or have their ceiling be your floor? And I think that is like just being there, like, yeah. being there. Hey, do you want to practice today? I'm here with you, you know, like, or seeing that and being like, I'm super proud of you or, Hey, you've been working hard or there are things like that, like instilling and kind of praising those things that you're all like, that's really cool. Like you're 10 years old and yet you're still in the pool wanting to practice, pushing yourself very hard. Like yeah. those are the right paths. And those are the things that like probably made you for who you are, but nobody other than a coach did that for you. Like it wasn't a parent, you know, like in, yeah. I think our, some of the best coaches could be your parents. Uh, yeah. But like years. my parents did my dad, my dad and my mom, they became parents at 15 and 16 years old. Like mm-hmm. my dad didn't know anything about, I mean, he knew a little bit about sports. He learned as we went, but like he didn't know like, right. like here, you'll appreciate this. Cause you, you like these books. And we talked about these books. Like I find these books to be so amazing, but, and I wish I could have read them when I was in college. But I've at my daughter being nine, now 10, I think she was nine when she, we listened to it, but I have, she has already listened to chop wood, carry water. Ah, I love it. You know, and now we're listening to, uh, pound Pound stone. stone. Yeah. You know? So it's like, she's already learning these lessons and what it means. And then like another thing I'm doing, like, again, I'm not saying these are right. You know, like a lot of this is my daughter and her own personality and I'm being blessed to have a daughter that loves to work hard, but like I'm buying her books of like swimmers that she really likes. Like mm. Katie Leducky is like one of the best female oh, yeah. swimmers right now. She's, she's in the Olympics. Beast. Beast. Yeah. And a book just came out. I saw it on Instagram cause we follow her. I was like, Oh, she just released a book. And she's like, dad, can I get the book? I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna say no. Right. And so right. 
Now she's reading the book about one of the best swimmers ever. So she's hearing, like, it was funny. Like, you'll appreciate this. She, uh, last week, she, <laughs> this is funny. So if you're a listener, like, this, I don't know. My 10 year old daughter, like, she got up in the middle of the night and she puked because she went to a birthday party and she just mm -hmm. ate junk food. You know, so she puked in the middle of the night. And then we're like, do you still want to go to the, the meet? We had the Iowa games. Uh, and she's like, yes. I'm like, well, I know, but you don't feel good. Like, was it being like hung over on junk food or is it like being sick? She's like, does it matter? Kayla Ducky qualified for the Olympics when she was sick. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that, that's it. That's amazing, but we're not yeah. puking in the pool, honey. We're 10 right. years old. <laughs> like, yeah, right. <laughs> we're not You're going to the Olympics. Funny. Yeah. So, uh, but she's learning those, like, she's already learning from the best already, at, you know, and seeing what it takes, you know? Right. But right. I wish no, I would have had that. That's good. And I think the, I, at the end of the day, like, we're not giving parenting advice because you probably shouldn't take it from us, but... I do think that there is something to be said about a parent that is present. Although we don't have all the right answers, we're right there, you know, and we're going to encourage the things that we think are good and, and then try to shy away from the places of like, okay, that's a pitfall that I know I see myself in her <laughs> or them. Yeah. Um, I would say this is my, this is my story, our personal story. So when Lorray was little, she was like, mm, man, six, let's say. And uh, she had this thing called H. pylori in her tummy. And the diagnosis or the thing that you're not supposed to do is just don't eat sugar and then take vitamins and all this stuff. And uh, she was going to go to her cousin's party, birthday party. And Love she asked my, my mom or my, I'm sorry, asked my wife, like, Hey mom, can I eat cupcakes and you know, ice cream? And I'll never forget this, Aaron. My wife goes, Oh honey, absolutely. You can eat whatever you want when you go. She's like, but I just want you to be mindful of how your tummy feels after you ate, you know, just be mindful of that. But you can absolutely. And she was genuinely saying that. Yeah. Well, guess who got to the party at six years old and didn't eat a single sugar granule? Right. My daughter. Right. Yeah. right. Guess who ate her seven cupcakes? I did. <laughs> so, <okay. laughs> um, but I do think there's wisdom in that. Like, I think I'm still trying to get over my, my parents saying like, you got to eat everything on your plate. Like to this day, I eat everything on my plate. Like that yeah. isn't healthy, you know, no, but yeah. you get something ingrained in you. And from an early age at six years old, my daughter was making the right decision of like, ah, I think I'm good. And I was like, that is amazing. And I bet you it wouldn't have gone that way if my, my wife would have been like, no, honey, like, absolutely not. You can't eat any of that. And then in the back of her head, she's like, well, I want it. Like, yeah. instead of like giving her responsibility um, and, and saying like, yeah, this the, is your body. Yeah. And like, think about how like, you and your wife and have to like, how long it took you guys to learn the cause and effect of actions, right? Oh, yeah. And now like you're starting this whole, you know, your guys' ceiling is her starting point and yeah. teaching her at a young age that like this cause and effect. Yeah, of course you can, as long as you're okay with the effect that comes mm -hmm. from it, you know, and, and she's only have to be responsible together. for that. Right. Yeah. Like, I mean, that that's how you get your kids to be like, take off like our ceiling is their starting point because you're instilling lessons that we're like, Oh, we finally got there. Finally learned this lesson at 36 years old, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay. So you probably got more than you bargained for on this. I hope you stayed to the end because I do feel like it's kind of helpful. It was helpful for me. Okay. You have any feedback for us? You can always reach us at 515-446-8158. You've been listening to the Uncommon Wealth Podcast. I've been your host, Philip Ramsey. And I'm Aaron Kramer. Until next time, go make good parenting decisions, which means just be present. Yeah. If you get good parenting stories, share those too. I'd love with to hear us. All right. Thanks for listening. Until next time. That's all for this episode, brought to you by Uncommon Wealth Partners. Be sure to visit UncommonWealth.com to learn more about our services. Don't miss an episode as we introduce you to inspiring people who are actively pursuing an uncommon life.